Hello and welcome to Pro Trader Strategies Market Commentary for Thursday, October the 8th. I'm Eric Wilkinson and you very well may recognize me as the Wolfman from Mainstream Media where I've talked about the economic data, the geopolitical environment, how that comes in to impact the overall markets with my market analysis and I'm going to do the same thing for you folks out there but I'm going to go a little bit further and talk about the option strategies that I implement into my portfolio on any given day following these guidelines I've set out for you guys to follow as well to implement options in our portfolio based on those assumptions. We aren't just picking option strategies out of a hat. What we're doing here is following guidelines to find the optimal option strategy for any given assumption. So we go into those details in our webinars like I'm gonna be doing today, my webinar later on this afternoon on the uh, straddle. So we're gonna talk about what we need to do uh, when we have an assumption when we play that straddle into that given assumption all right so we'll go into those details on a more of a market neutral type strategy that we can profit from kind of like what we've been seeing here in crude oil trending sideways would it not be the perfect strategy to sell a uh, straddle on or not and i'm going to tell you whether or not it would be all right so check that out at pro trader strategies we don't have a whole lot of economic data again today, other than we did get unemployment claims coming in at 840,000, a bit of an uptick from the 820,000, but really not a ton of difference there. Uh, they did revise last month's number up also by just over 10,000. So, you know, could be really, I don't think it's impacting the overall markets. It could be more of a wet blanket in normal circumstances, but in this environment, it's really, a battle of the bulls and the bears as to what is going to happen in this geopolitical environment. Are uh, the Democrats going to take over the presidency and uh, the Senate, all of those things? Is Trump gonna win? Well, the bull, some bulls believe that if Biden wins, then that's gonna be a lot of government spending that could help the overall markets that way. If Trump gets in, then uh, his lowering of taxes will allow the corporations to spend more and grow the economy that way. So there's two different opposing uh, theses here for the bulls and for the bears, vice versa. You know, the bear, some bears are believing that government spending is going to be very short lived, but then it's going to be an overall drag on the overall corporate environment. Uh, so that is a bearish uh, assumption there as well. So you know, depending on who you think are, is going to win or lose, there's bulls and bears on both sides of that, which is really what's kind of causing this bit of volatility, but we haven't gone anywhere. And I've talked about that several times in the past in these daily market commentaries, the battle of the bulls and the bears, but the bulls and the bears are kind of the same person, you know, in a, in a sense where if you think Biden's going to win, there's bulls in that camp and there's bears in that camp. So uh, that is causing the markets to really fluctuate. Ultimately, it's coming down to this stimulus package. If it can get through, that is an overarching theme as a bullish kind of uh, development. And when we saw that we weren't going to get that stimulus, we saw the markets fall off. Then we saw Trump come back and say, well, we could do a smaller package in the meantime to kind of get these people some money that are uh, much needed at this time for uh, unemployment and for uh, a bit of a stimulus to get some spending going. So those are a couple of things that are, are churning in the waters. And it's, it's kind of believing, leaning in my eyes towards that we will get that stimulus package maybe closer and closer to the election. But at this point in time, it looks like they are really trying uh, to get something passed, all right? So uh, I don't wanna go into my thoughts on all of what is involved in those uh, package deals. Some of it I think is a little bit uh, of, you know, throwing some pork in there uh, just to get some money to places that don't really need it at this point in time or really don't deserve it, to be honest. All right, so let's talk about the overall markets. Uh, we talked about how the geopolitical environment's affecting these markets. It's kind of all over the place, really. Uh, with the crude oil, though, it is moving a little bit higher today by about $1.30, but still, again, stuck in that range we've been talking about for months now on end. And I've talked about this. I think that this is kind of where the sweet spot is becoming 
and uh, and is good for the overall economy. Yeah, sure, I would like it to see it with a 30 handle. That allows us to spend a little bit more. But as long as it doesn't go up above $45 a barrel and really start breaching that $50 handle, I think that it will help the overall economy spur in other areas. All right, so gold futures making a bit of a move to the upside, but for you know for the most part, it is uh still below that line in the sand that i've been talking about that 1923 area now if we start seeing this stimulus package become more of a reality i think that we're going to see a spike here in gold futures as it is dollar denominated weakening dollar would strengthen the overall uh gold futures or the pr price of gold all right, bonds all over the place. Uh, the last couple of days, just a whipsaw effect for the most part, up a half a point on the day. Trying to get back above that 200-day moving average. We've talked about that. Settlements below that indicate more of a longer-term bearish trend, which means increasing interest rates. We don't want to see increased interest rates right now at this time. Yeah, it's hurting the financials, but we want the consumer to be buying houses and spending uh, you know, as interest rates rise, it's more of an incentive to save money, right? Uh, whereas with lower interest rates, it's more of an incentive to spend. And I'm kind of on the camp. We need to start from spending here from the consumer, which is why I'd like to see the stimulus package go through because that spurs spending as well. Uh, VIX is moving off of its low, still in negative territory, but we have the equities in positive territory. Yes, it is looking like we are getting a bit of a topping here. Uh, we've got kind of tweezer tops across the board. Some people could say that this is that cup and handle formation that we've talked about. It's not a perfect cup and handle because we've got this massive high there. But one thing to note as of today, we have breached uh, and created a higher high, which is uh, breaking of the what we've been seeing is lower highs and lower lows. That's a downward trajectory trajectory there uh, but um, you know we've gone a lot uh, we've made some big moves here but again you know we're right there very near where the point of control is where the time and volume has been spent so uh, in a broader sense we haven't really gone anywhere in the last couple of months and today's topping pattern weakness heading into the end of the day it looks like that it is going to look like we're going to kind of peel back down there to that point of control there in the Dow Jones industrial average and the NASDAQ uh, up uh, basically 51 points on the day. It is trending sideways right here and really nothing to see here. It's really just like I said, when we got these battle of the bulls and the bears, you know, you see somebody like Biden starting to advance in the polls. Well, there's the bulls in that camp and there's the bears in that camp. And that is kind of suppressing these market fluctuations a little bit. And the E-mini S&P is up 25 points on the day. You can see with the breakdown of the E-mini S&Ps, 30-minute candles here, it's not going anywhere. We are just kind of flopping all over the place, at least with the indices. Now, we've got a couple of other things that I've been doing in my portfolio. I've been talking about it for a couple of days now of a couple of trades that I've been looking to um, get out of here. <clears throat> and one of them being Amazon that I was able to get out of today. Uh, on these short puts that I had. I did it obviously a little bit earlier today. As a matter of fact, I got out of them at uh, 11 o'clock Eastern, I think it was. Uh, so, you know, a few hours ago at this point in time. Um, so I did it earlier this morning. And with that being said, uh, I did Amazon. You guys remember I sold the October, which are expiring basically next Friday, and sold the 2,800 puts in there for originally $8.35. So when we talk about selling something for a credit, I sold those 2,800 puts, which gave me great strike location, uh, well below this uh, Fibonacci here. So I've got two support areas that I was looking at uh, to help me out with this strategy. So nice risk reward on that, having a couple of support areas. The other thing was is getting a nice credit because we had that volatility spike and I did this on the fifth of this month so three days ago so you can see that 
volatility was relatively at its high. We got the volatility coming out today. Uh, I lost about, um, what is that? Basically two points in volatility with that theta decay as well, which is really ramping up right now uh, inside of this 10 days to expiration. That's helping me out as well. And I was able to get out of this for slightly better than 50% of max profit and bought them back for $4. Uh, so nice win there. Uh, directionally, traded sideways, you know, it was pretty market neutral. I didn't get a massive move to the upside, but I've got that theta and that vega coming out of this trade, allowing me to get out of it in just a couple of days. So a huge win on this trade, despite the fact that it hasn't gone anywhere. That's the beauty in setting these strategies up like I talk about in our guidelines or the roadmap to trading options that you guys should all check out because we follow some guidelines. We're turning the table into our favor. We don't always have to have a massive move to one side or the other. What we can do is take advantage of these fundamentals that options inherently have and use them to our favor. So we don't always have to just knock it out of the park uh, and sometimes we can even be directionally wrong and make money on something like that trade there. You know, I was somewhat directionally wrong. It didn't go anywhere in the last few days, but I got that theta coming out. I got the volatility coming out and I got my profit, uh, target reached in three days. All right. So with that being said, let's move on to, uh, the other trade that I have is pin. And if you guys remember with this trade, I've been working on, now PIN is really having uh, some struggles today as uh, you can see here. Uh, what, what we did here with this trade was is I got involved in it back here on the lows. As a matter of fact, I believe it was even this day where we made the low. Um, I don't have the exact date of it right off the top of my head, but it was one of these two days right here where I bought PIN for $4.49. I've ridden it all the way up here to trading up into the 70s. So that has obviously been very uh, well received by my portfolio. It is only on paper, but the thing that we're trying to do here at Pro Trader Strategies is stay mechanical with these types of trades. Yes, this is a longer term trade that I wanted to play out. So I didn't just do options around this and when it was you know, priced below $5 and Penn was kind of really uh, you know, not a household name like it is, these days, uh, thanks to Barstool Sports. But with that being said, been able to capitalize on the upside. I decided it was starting to be the time to start being mechanical with this trade and did some cover calls, lowering my overall basis. They don't pay a dividend, so why not get into a, my own dividend? You know, I can look at it as I'm lowering my co overall cost basis to zero or I'm getting myself a dividend. Would be happy to cover this trade uh, at a certain level. Well, my, my level was that I was comfortable getting out of it was the 85 area. So what I did is I went into the October and sold 85 calls against my long, uh, stock position. Now by selling those 85 calls in there, I was able to collect a dollar 39. All right. So I bought it at, uh, dollar uh, 36. Actually, I think I sold those at, um, a dollar thirty-six. Let's call it. Uh, I'll, I'll double check on that. Um, now that I've confused myself, it was a dollar thirty something um, <laughs> in this trade. So what I've done is lowered my overall cost basis. I sold it um, a couple of times. I bought the stock at four dollars and forty-nine cents. Um, I also have done some calls against it when I sold some calls in the August. Back in August, sold the August forty-five calls in there for 48 cents. Uh, actually, I let those expire. I sold the 65 calls, let those expire, I couldn't get my price. So all I've done, sorry, is the October, sold the 85 calls in there for $1.35 and bought them back today for 14 cents. Uh, so I thought I did it one other time possibly, but those uh, trades got canceled on those Thankfully, because I probably would have had them called away at that point in time. But I did lower my overall cost basis here by about $1.20. So you can look at it like I got a dividend or we can look at it like I've lowered my overall cost basis and now owning this for $3.29. Okay, so um, uh, staying mechanical with this trade, that's what we're doing with str str uh, the portfolio where we have longer 
term uh, trades in there. I would have been happy to get out of those at 85 calls and try and buy them back by selling puts. So that would have been my thesis on that trade or roll it into something like the other stocks that have uh, some exposure to Macau and a little bit more diversified like MGM, Win, and things of that nature. So uh, covered that trade on this one. I am still trying to get out of my Kroger trade, which is uh, starting to move against uh, against me to the downside. It was looking a little bit better this morning. Really needed to get back up to around $35, uh, which we just came up shy of that this morning. So I'm trying to get out of that where I am long calls in Kroger in both my trading portfolio and in my IRA with the uh, Kroger trade in there. So um, Kroger hasn't hasn't gotten uh, taken away from me yet, but I have on the January long the 35 calls in there. And uh, I've got an offer in there to get out of them at $2.22, which is about 50% increase in that underlying because what I've done is I bought those calls at around $1.57. So I bought them at $1.57 trying to get out for $2.22. Um, and, and that seemed like a good location for me. Yeah, right around probably 225 is a 50% increase, but uh, it's struggled to get up above this 50 day moving average, as you can see there on the chart and uh, taking a couple extra pennies off the table in order to get filled. But it's tra it's at around $1.80, so I'm about 40 cents away, which is uh, basically almost a dollar uh, upside in the underlying. So I needed to get up into that 35 handle in order to probably cover those for my profit target. All right, so that's about it for me. Uh, check out today's webinar, like I talked about. It is going to be on the short straddle. I'm gonna talk about when, where, and why we would implement this strategy. Obviously, I gave you guys a little bit of hint. It's basically when we're looking at a sideways trending underlying and when we need to implement that, what's the expiration cycle, what are the strike locations? We'll talk about that there as well. But and how all of the nuances affect this underlying to uh, get us the profitability relatively quickly. All right, that's it. That's all I got for you. Oh wait, no. One other thing we do always have to talk about, and that is our disclaimer. Please take a moment to go over this, uh, as we are an educational company. All right. So if you can't take that, <laughs> take it easy. <laughs>